And so Brunei Darul Salam, by the way, is Chi- ASEAN Chair 2021. We're going to be hosting the 8th ASEAN Tom Annual Meeting, and that's going to be taking place between the 5th until the 9th of July 2021, of course, virtually in this day and age, and also in light of the pandemic at the International Convention Center in Brakas. And this morning, joining us to tell us a little bit more about this is the Safety, Health and Environment National Authority, Sheena, Mr. Juni Ko, and also Ms. Noor Iza. Uh, Alinor, our radiation officers too from Sheena. Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Hello, morning. Good morning. We're feeling excited about this. All right, great to hear that because you know this is something that's very exciting that you, of course you're going to share with us more details about. So as we said, it is going to be the eighth ASEAN Tom. That's going to be from the fifth until the 9th of July. What is this all about? Let's go to the basics first and foremost. Um, First of all, thank you for having us at Pilihan FM. It is a pleasure for both Isa and I to be here today. So the five days Asento meeting will begin on the 5th July, which is next week, and it will run for five days until the 9th of July, 2021. So this meeting will be conducted via video conference from the International Convention Center, ICC. And this meeting will be chaired by the Radiation Department at China with the support from the Ministry of Energy. And all the ASEAN member states, various dialogue partners, as well as international organizations will be in attendance at a meeting. Now, to understand the meeting better, we have to first know what is ASEAN TOM. ASEAN TOM stands for ASEAN Network of Regulatory Bodies on Atomic Energy, which this network was established in the year 2013. The main objective of ASEAN TOM is to enhance regulatory activities and further strengthen nuclear safety, nuclear security, and safeguards within the ASEAN community by strengthening cooperation as well as complementing the work of existing mechanism at the national, regional, and international levels. Hence, the annual ASEANTOM meeting serves as a platform for information exchange and discussion among experts and nuclear regulatory bodies on mechanisms that can strengthen our capabilities in ensuring that ASEAN remain a safe and peaceful region when it comes to utilizing nuclear technology. So what do you guys talk about at ASEAN, Tom, then? This is a very interesting topic. Of course, it's not for the typical layman, but we are also curious as well to find out what exactly goes on behind those ASEAN, Tom, as well, those discussions. So this meeting will discuss matters related to capacity building programs and implementation of projects under ASEAN, Tom, in both the national and regional level. All the outcomes are expected to benefit all ASEAN member states in strengthening nuclear safety, nuclear security, and safeguards in the region. There will be quite a number of discussions that will involve dialogue partners, such as the IEA, European Union, and the Republic of South Korea. The five-year work work plan, which comprises various activities of ASEAN TOM, will also be discussed and reviewed during the meeting, taking into account the restrictions that are caused by the coronavirus pandemic or simply the COVID-19. Now, I'm sure that, you know, uh, because we are going to be hosting this, there's also going to be a lot of first-hand knowledge uh, that we will gain as the host country itself. So what are some of the benefits then, if you can just enlighten us on what we can possibly gain uh, from this meeting itself? Uh, of course. So as chair of ASEANTOM this year, the meeting is an opportunity for Brunei Darussalam to lead discussions and steer ASEANTOM towards a direction that will greatly benefit not only our country, but also other ASEAN member states in strengthening nuclear safety, nuclear security and safeguards in the region. In addition, the importance of nuclear and radiation technology has become evident in the current age, whereby its applications range from heightened security at our borders, efficiency in some industrial sectors, agriculture, culture heritage, as well as in medicine. So all these applications can also support the industrial initiative that are in support of our Wawasan 2035. Now we introduce, of course, both of you as radiation officers uh, from Sheena itself. So I would imagine that you guys are kind of like the lead driver when it comes to ASEAN Tom. Yep. Would that be correct? Yes. yes. And let's go a little bit more behind the scenes now then. You know, uh, obviously, you know, atomic energy, that's not, like I said, is something that a layman comes across all the time. So what exactly do you guys do at Sheena then? If you can just share with us a little bit more, because we really get you on. So we want to find out more about you all. All right. To begin with, um, Sheena is a statutory body established by consent of His Majesty the Sultan under the Sheena Order 2018. So the Radiation Department at Sheena is mandated to enforce the Radiation Protection Order 2018 to regulate all activities related to ionizing radiation. 
So we have a lot of functions there whereby a few of it is including providing guidance and advice on matters related to ionizing radiation as well as representing our country in discussions and negotiation on international agreements, conventions or treaties related to atomic energy. Okay, it's interesting that you've said that because one of the follow-ups, of course, that we have is to talk about uh, this this department, the radiation department at Sheena, that is. So you mentioned that it's for ionizing uh, radiation here in Brunei Darussalam. Uh, what does that entail? So there is some misconception when it comes to the term ionizing radiation where people have the tendency to think of mobile phones and televisions, but that's not the case. Ionizing radiation are those that can cause harm to your body whenever exposed. Some examples of ionizing radiation can be commonly seen in Brunei Darussalam, include radiation emitted by X-ray scanner at hospital and at the airport when your luggage goes through customs, as well as the use of radioactive sources for checking assets used by the oil and gas industry. Right, so that is a little bit more about that. And of course, uh, we want to follow up as well that, you know, that it is... Uh, well regulated as you pointed out um but there's also an order i believe that we want to mention here which is that uh there is an order the radiation protection order 2018 this is to ensure i'm sure the safety of everyone involved with this process so if you could tell us a little bit more about that so radiation protection order 2018 was gazetted by his majesty on the 8th december 2018 this order regulates all sorts of activities involving radioactive materials and control apparatus, such as importation and exportation, manufacture, sale, disposal, as well as transport of radioactive materials. As per Section 5, Subsection 3 of the order, authorized officer, including June and myself, are empowered to enforce the provisions. To share a little bit more on the radiation protection order, the order emphasized that any company or individual dealing with radioactive materials or control apparatus must obtain a license from Sheena. It is stated in the order that any individual or body corporate caught breaching the law is liable on con conviction to a fine within range of $10,000 and $10 million, imprisonment for a term between one year and five years or both. So if they are not complying to the order, it will consider as of an offense. Therefore, our role at Radiation Department is to ensure that these activities are carried out safely for the protection of the workers, public, as well as the environment, through issuance of license, registration of radiation workers, and inspection visits to radiation facilities. I'm sure that a lot of people also are surprised to hear that behind the scenes, these are actually heavily regulated yes. and not just, you know, install and leave it as it is, right? Uh, of course, you know, this isn't something that is new because it's been happening for quite a while, but in the international arena, how do we compare? Are we right up there in terms of the regulations then? So for the benefit of everyone, Brunei Darussalam is a member state to the International Atomic Energy Agency, or widely known as the IAEA, since the year 2014. And not just us, all ASEAN member states are member to the IAEA as well. And it is because of this membership, the radiation legal system in Brunei Darussalam is in accordance with the standards approved by the IAEA. Okay, good to hear that. We are more rest assured in that aspect than, of course. And finally, if they are in this industry and they want to find out more, maybe just to make sure that they are complying with the guidelines and the orders, how can they get hold of you guys? How can they reach out to you? So for this matter, Everyone is welcome to visit our Sheena website at www.sheena.gov.bn where we update our information regularly. Even for our radiation articles that we have published on the newspaper last year can be found on the website. Otherwise, you may reach us at our office line 238-2000, I repeat, 238-2000, or simply drop us an email at ratinfo at sheena.gov.bn. All right, some interesting stuff there. Thank you so much uh, for your time. To both of you, we've got Mr. Juni Ko and also Ms. Noor Iza Alinor, a radiation officer from the Safety, Health, and Environment National Authority, Sheena, this morning, not just talking to us about the radiation industry somewhat industry in Brunei Darussalam, but also about ASEAN TOM 2021, that taking place between the 5th until the 9th of July 2021, supporting, uh, of course, the ASEAN Thomas ASEAN Chair Brunei uh, 2021. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day ahead.
Thank you. Thank All you. right, then. Uh, that, of course, is our live interview right here on Benihana FM Radio. Brunei, 20 minutes to the top of the hour. Mm-hmm.